we're back in the mechanical room. So today I'm going to show you what we do to uh, do a preventive maintenance on one of these uh, self-contained train units. It's basically like a uh, water source heat pump, but really big, and it's like an Atelipack, something like that. So this guy is actually has hydronic heat and he uses a cooling tower uh, to dump all the heat into it. So anyway. The very first thing you do when we're doing our PM is we hit diagnostics. We do this before we do anything else because we want to see if there's any error codes. So I got no active codes. So we hit next, we got nothing. And then if you do have something, you want to go ahead and clear it. So the way you do that, this is the log. You would just hit cancel once you're in the log. And then it would tell you to enter a password, which is minus plus plus minus. If there's an active alert, um, then what you do is you would hit cancel when you're in the active and then you would hit minus plus plus or plus plus minus one of those and then you would clear it and if there's any like you know things on there you want to clear them out that way you know it's you'll you'll know if it's new or old or whatever as you can see it's in uh, normal mode we're gonna hit stop okay I'm gonna wait till everything stops. It says unit stop. Now we're gonna go find the breaker, cut the power. All right, so we were at AC6. Ugh. All right, power's off. So we're gonna go ahead and change our filters. So it's along here on the side. Just gonna squeeze through here. Whoa. All right, and then we have three common. So we just basically turn these counterclockwise to unlock them. There's one there and then one there. And then this just opens up. I already unscrewed them. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and change our filters. Now. Alrighty, so now we need to go ahead and check our electricals. So you need a 3 8 drill bit. Uh, usually there's one there, one there, but these are missing. So this is how you get to your electrical stuff here. So all your circuit boards are here, so this just opens up like that. And I'm gonna be doing a visual inspection, and then we'll get some uh, CO2 and blow out all the dust. See, and that just opens up like that. You have full access to all your boards and your transformers. There we go. There's some fuses. These are the breakers for the each compressor circuit. And down here, that's the contactors for the compressors. Uh, so basically, we're going to make sure all the connections are tight. And then uh, we'll blow all the dust out of these, keep it clean. Some CO2. to keep these boards clean believe it or not dust particles can really cause a lot of problems especially with circuit boards alrighty so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just check all my connections make sure everything is tight um, so safety first always double check your voltage make sure this is where our voltage comes in nothing so that's uh, A and B and that's B and C nothing and A and C nothing always check all your legs just to be sure just to be safe you don't want to get shot basically I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of tug on everything make sure nothing's gonna just pop off you know that kind of thing um, and then if there's a, so that's a little loose all right so I'm just gonna make sure that's all tight and then this type of stuff when and it has actual screws and stuff I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up Sure everything's nice and tight see that one was actually loose because these big units they just vibrate like crazy let's try not to break stuff and um, sometimes the screws will actually get loosened up a little bit right. yeah that's a little loose yeah so we had, this screw was pretty loose all right and then uh, we will also check these I'll have to get a um, allen wrench for that just make sure that's nice and tight and then we'll tighten the lugs on the uh, contactors as well. Yeah, those are nice and tight. Oh, that one's a little loose. Very important to have tight connections. 
All right, so you're gonna to wanna to take this panel off. So there's two screws, one there, one there, and two screws here and here. And then this thing just comes off and now you have access to all the lugs. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and tighten everything. So most of the time these things don't move at all, but it's always good to just make sure. It's apparent that everything's pretty tight. And I can see there's some scores in these screws. So somebody's been tightening these as well. So that's good. All right, so the next one is uh, the blower controller. Uh, so there's screws here and screws here. This one's missing them. All right, so we got contactors here we need to tighten up. So we're gonna open up our uh, blower compartment and check our belt and uh, grease up our bearings. So we got screw there, screws here, screw there, screw there, screw there, screw there. And then it's actually hanging on a lip. So you just pick it up and bring it towards you. It comes right off. All right, so we're in our blower, blower compartment. It looks like this motor's got changed about four months ago. So uh, these right here are the circuit fittings for it. That's where we grease it uh, front and back or actually front and back. Uh, we're not going to do it because it's only four months old, so I'm sure it's got plenty of grease. Uh, but this guy hasn't been greased for a while. Um, and then we're going to also check our belt. So this belt was actually changed three months ago, so it looked well. Looks like it's okay, so we're not going to change it. Um, but let's get this greased up. So that's our port right there. So first things first, it's always good to wipe it off first. That way you don't push any junk in there when you grease it. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop that on there like that. And we're just gonna give it like two, uh, like three to four pumps. Okay. And there we go. And then when you're done, make sure you wipe it off. That way you have a bunch of dirt and stuff doesn't stick to it. And then you also wanna do the same with your grease gun. All right, so let's go ahead and do the other side. Of course, once you do that, you want to give it a good roll so it will spread all up in there. All right, so we're on the other side here. Uh, so that's the pressure switch that proves the um, fan's running. And then we got a couple side glasses here. Um, I believe the, the TXV is over here. Yeah, they're, well, they're around the corner, they're right over there. But yeah, it looks like this guy's been over greased. We'll wipe that up first. All right, cool. Now we can see if any of our grease pops out when we put it in there. So if that happens, that's when you stop. <laughs> you don't want grease popping out. It means you over greased it. Like I said, usually you only need like three to four pumps. This one's pretty big, so I go four. Smaller ones, I only do like maybe three. All right. Just enough. I could see it moving through the edges. I don't know if that showed up on camera, but uh, yeah. Don't want it squirting out all the way. Then we're gonna take our rag and we're gonna wipe off our fitting here. Then we'll wipe off the end of our grease gun. And we'll give her a little spin. Get all that grease all up in there. And there we go. So she's all greased up. All right, so here are our compressors down here. I just do like to take a look at them, make sure I don't see oil anywhere, which I don't. Alrighty, so we're just gonna make sure that's all nice and tight. And we will do the same thing with the other one, but uh, I'll save you time and we'll film that part. All right, cool. We wanna go ahead and go into test mode, so we're gonna hit service mode, okay? And this is gonna let us test everything. So we want our supply fan on, okay? and it's gonna be at 75%. As we hit next, 
you can see it how it moved over here so that means we can change this parameter I usually like to go at 100% because I want to see what my maximum amp draw is on my blower motor okay and then to make to enter that change you have to hit enter okay so if I were to do this you know make a change and I try to hit previous or next it won't let me so you always have to hit enter if you change anything even if you put it back to the where it was okay uh, so we're going to hit next. I want to make sure everything else is off and on. So VAV box relay, drive max. That means it's going to open all the VAVs. I want that to always be drive max. Otherwise, if they're all closed and you're at 100%, you're going to have some issues. All right. All right. And we're going to leave this stuff alone. We're going to leave that on auto. This is our compressor relays. We want these off because I want to be able to control them because I'm going to be checking amp draws on the compressors. Okay. So then... Hydronic actuator. So this is for the hydronic uh, valve. Uh, it allows hot water through the hydronic coil. Um, we'll leave that at 0% because I'm going to cycle that later. This is for our economizer dampers. We're going to leave that. All right. And this stuff doesn't matter for, uh, for what we're doing. So you can see here now it says start test. So it's going to count down to five seconds. And then it will kick on my blower because that's what I asked for. Right, there's that blower relay now if we walk over here to our um, what do you call it to our VFD readout here we can see what it's doing now I would want to get amp draws on this blower motor but what I can do is I don't have to use my meter I push display mode and now it tells me what amp draw is right there and horsepower all right so we're gonna go ahead and go to service mode again and we're gonna hit next until we get to our compressor relay control, which is right here. We're gonna hit the arrow up, and then we're gonna hit enter. We got it on inrush. All right, so 72.90 is our inrush amp draw. And we're at 10 amps. Again, if we look at our chart here, Compressor 1 is 14 and a half, compressor 2 is 14 and a half, LRA is 117, so we're all within uh, spec so far. Cool, so we're going to go ahead and move this over to circuit 2. And now we're going to go ahead and hit next, and we're going to hit plus, and then we're going to hit enter, and we're going to, oh, hit rush, 72 amps. pulling 11 amps so far so good so we're gonna go ahead and let that run for a little bit and then uh, just make sure it doesn't like cut out or anything and then we'll go ahead and start turning on our water valve and our economizer oh yeah I almost forgot so if you're running the air and you want to see what's going on with it you can actually hit uh, status and then you hit next and you just keep going to next and enter. And then now we can see what our return, or I'm sorry, our supply air temperature is. We can hit next. We can see our zone temperature. We can see our auxiliary. Well, it's not hooked up. Um, but we can actually see our evaporator temperatures right here. So that's for circuit one. And our evaporator temperature is 40. Condenser temperature is about 80 degrees. We hit next we can see circuit two so this is if you want to get all your temperatures and stuff uh, you just go into the status menu and you can just see all that all right so we're going to turn off our compressors and we have to do them in the same order so this one's got to go off first all right previous hydronic heat I'm gonna put it at hundred percent and I just want to make sure that the valves actually opening properly now this valve moves extremely slow so I'm probably gonna speed up the video for you so it is gonna be this uh, Blimo actuator right over here 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and close our valve. We wanna make sure it opens and closes. All right, and then enter, and we'll watch it close. All right, now that we're all done with that, we're gonna go ahead and test our um, economizer damper. So we're gonna hit next, and we're gonna go all the way open. And again, these uh, dampers move extremely slow, so we'll speed it up for you. And we're going to open and close it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and close it again. All right. All right, now that's all done. We're going to hit stop. And that's going to take us out of our service mode. And then once it's all rebooted, so now we just hit auto. And now the BAS will take over. And we're good to go. So I like to stand here and make sure it actually does something before I leave, just to make sure there was no errors. But anyway, that's pretty much how you do a preventive maintenance on a uh, train uh, commercial self-contained unit. Uh, I think it's technically an IntelliPak. I'm not sure, but it's pretty much the same kind of uh, setup here. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.